and today we're on location coming to you live from behind a small card table in the foyer of the Sydney Exhibition Centre, venue for tonight's 1996 ARIA Awards. Over the next two hours we'll be crash tackling as many of the participants as we can, including Jimmy Barnes, Nina Cherry, Tina Arena and hopefully those Wiggles. For those <laughs> who couldn't give a toss, we'll be playing Radio Gladiators and Sticky Beaks, plus we'll be attempting to reinflate that ginormous Wayne Carey right here live on the program. Yes, it's all coming up on this radio's afternoon of afternoons, <laughs> Martin Malloy. <laughs> well, there you go. That'd be a bit of Christine Arnu with Party here at Martin Malloy, hopefully going live around the whole country. Mm -hmm. We're sitting behind a small card table in the foyer of the Sydney Exhibition Centre. Uh, getting ready for tonight's ARIA Awards. Who are we, you might be asking? Well, it's me, Tony Martin, and this bloke here, the least known of the Geldof Yates kiddies, Mick Aristophanes, Huckleberry, Julio, Coolio, Boutros, Boutros, Totty Malloy. You missed my middle name. <laughs> oh, did I? Aubergine. Oh, well, yes, it's my favourite. We'll get it right, Nick. But uh, we haven't seen too many stars mm. so far. I'll give it time. It's very early. It's only the afternoon. I think I may have seen a wiggle. <laughs> going in at one point, or it could have been one of the hooly doolies. Yeah, you never can tell these days, can you? <laughs> All right, but uh, we have got, uh, well, well, we've got somebody here with us now who's going to be up on stage this evening. Our first guest, people, on this very special Arias broadcast will be amongst those dishing out the awards and the gift certificates at tonight's <laughs> Arias. Her album, Man, is currently in the uh, top ten. Her single, Woman, is only in the top 20, so there you go, blokes getting the better deal again. Here she is, it's Nina Cherry! And we've got the show band with us on location, Absolutely. fantastic. Nina, thanks for joining Hello. us. Are you the hairiest of the Geldof kids? <laughs> I am. Are it's you? a competition we've been running for ages. I'm going to shave this beard eventually into something that looks like that wacky thing Bob Geldof's getting that, around in. Have you seen is, that? I've I must say, I find that kind of quite hideous. Yes, <laughs> it's uh, oh, just ignore it's a bit of satellite something? trouble. Is that a little bit of, sorry, it's like out here on location, these things happen. You know? <laughs> That's things right. Things are slightly out of control. <laughs> yes, the, the Geldof beard and moustache, it always looks to me like he's just had an exploding cigar go off in his face <laughs> and he hasn't looked in a mirror yet. It's certainly not straight, is it? I mean, no. like, it's always slightly kind of off no, centre. One of those weirdly named kiddies is taken to his face with a felt pen while he was asleep. <laughs> it's like one of those magic eye pictures and you've got to go mm. up to Bob Geldof, put your nose right up to him, and when you pull it away, you get this amazing image of a reasonably respectable-looking beard. A knight of the realm. There you go. <laughs> yes. Now, Nina, how long have you been out here in Australia? Uh, in Australia? Yeah, Australia. I've been, I've been here for four days. And you've already yeah. mastered the and accent. I'd like to <laughs> ask a question when I'm giving an answer. <laughs> <my order. laughs> put that, a question mark at the end of the sentence. Uh, that's even more yeah. pronounced if you go to New no. Zealand. I'm from New really? Zealand and I've got a friend I'm from... I'm going there tomorrow. Oh, re well, you have to get used to that. I'm to, in, I'm into that. Everything's really a question. <laughs> I'm going but down the shops. <laughs> there, yeah. If you're going there tomorrow, Nina, I'd say you might be going without any sleep. What? Are tonight? you going to have a big night tonight? Um, it's hard to say, really. Mm, make it up I as think you go I'll, on. I'll pace myself. Mm. Well, what do you know I'll about just... Australian awards shows? Uh. Ask me tomorrow, I'll tell you. <laughs> have, you. have you done much? What have they got you doing? You're not uh, belting out a number, you're just uh, presenting something to somebody. Yeah, I'm giving out the best debut singles, I think. Yeah. Or, and best up and best new band or something like that. It's two of them anyway. Right. It's best, I think it's best two things, mm. new. Have best you... new, two best <laughs> new and that's how we want you to announce it tonight. <laughs> yeah, no, it'll be something like that. I'll first I'll trip over. They'll write it down on know, cards for yeah. you. You'll be fine. And, and uh, have you done much presenting at awards shows before? I've done a couple. Mm. I've done uh, Brits. Oh, I've done a couple Were you there last year? When Jarvis Cocker went the moon fest? I uh, know, unfortunately I missed that, but it was quite good. <laughs> was Brian it? Eno wrote a um, letter to Music Week. After yeah. that event, because everyone that went up com completely yes. freaked out about it, and mm. you know, oh my God, you know, Michael Jackson's million-dollar performance, mm. and Jarvis hurt these poor children and stuff, and he didn't mm. actually hurt anyone, you know. No. And um, so, and he was going to go to court and stuff, and mm. Brian, you know, wrote a very eloquent, great letter in yes. support of Jarvis's accent. No, uh, accent. Action. Sorry, I'm not getting obsessed with accents. Uh, you know? We'll edit all this out later, don't you worry. Now, uh, Nina, have you been surprised by uh, how successful this album's been right out of the gate here in Australia? 
Yes. Mm. It's been a really, really nice the people... surprise and, uh, uh, you know, mm. really bliss. Do you get much mail? Do you get many letters from Australia? Do you have any idea what people are doing down here? Can I just throw us a few? This is what we do with all our overseas guests. Are you just throw, put you me th- on the spot now and like... <laughs> give us what? a bit of a pop quiz. You throw a few things that you've seen since you've been down here in Australia at us and we'll attempt to explain them for you live on air. Um, what have I seen down here? I haven't seen that much, actually. I've been locked into my hotel room. You should have kept thanks a diary. You've been Penny. here four days. And <laughs> you have no memories thanks. to take away with you. I've got um, some good memories of, like, I had a wicked... One of my best memories has got to do with food, actually, down here. Yeah. And I had a, the most wicked pasta I've ever had in my life in Melbourne. Ooh, mm. pasta. Have you tried... Uh, we have and I've here. seen some really good faces. I made a little trip to Paddington. Yeah. In did a, a little quick photo call for my own personal archives in front of the Opera House. <laughs> Have you seen any and footy while you've been out here? Football. I've been, oh yeah, the footy. Yeah. Of course, yeah, we were in Melbourne during the, the, the Grand oh, Final. Or whatever it's called. Mm. You didn't get up on stage with that <laughs> super group, did you? <laughs> they no? wheeled out some big guns. Oh, Daryl yeah, Summers like, was up there. The, in our, uh, the hotel in the lobby, there were like stacks of blankets for a... Mm. Uh, the people they couldn't fit into the rooms to just like kind of line up on the floor. Mm. And Our federal crash treasurer would have dropped those off. <laughs> really? That's what he does. He <laughs> drops around delivering nice blankies to poor people. Yeah. He's a lovely man. Now, poor what we're, footy fans. What yeah. we're alluding to here, Nina, is sure you've got uh, records in the charts and you've had a certain degree of success, but in this country you haven't really made it till you've sung at a footy game. Have you ever been asked to do anything like that back home? I've, I, I think in the States I was asked to sing. Um, something for one of the, for, you know, and it, Grid the, on. Um, something, I can't something remember. Like and then also for a friend of mine who recorded the Japanese song for the Olympics asked me to sing on that. All oh, right. And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not in the record. But I part. haven't, like, been asked to sing for, you know, an okay. FA Cup. Hey, now, how long have you Chelsea been working on this album, Nina? Yeah. This one here? Because you, you, it's a long time between drinks. It's off a cracking Between taste. drinks. What do you, <laughs> you don't set yourself a cracking pace, do you? No. It's, mm. and but is the that, actual is that? making of the album didn't act, didn't take that long, you know? I mean, the, the, the bulk of the album was done over a kind of three-month period mm. after having done a tour last summer, and that's when everything really came together. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a little moving of countries, mm. moved to Spain, and just kind of got into writing. I worked with Tricky for a while. Mm. Did, um, he seems like a like character. Him. We're always He's reading about man. Tricky. What's his story? Was that man. a good collaboration? It was good. Mm. Anything you it can tell us about Tricky that uh, little light and delicious? Tricky. He's Tricky. That's all we're going to get. He's full on. Mm. 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 He was right. out here. I, tell us he's about... Uh, he's, a, he's a really... He's really talented, you know, and he's one of those people that when he has an idea, he gets up and gets on with it and sees it through there and then. You know, a lot of people mm. sit around and talk about what they're going to do and, you know, mm. blah, 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 carry on page. And Tricky just mm. does stuff. Mm-hmm. He's very prolific. Now, Nina, we're not sure if you and Mr. Tricky and a few others like uh, Massive Attack like being lumped into that category, co- category called the not Bristol really. Sound. Now, unfortunately, you're speaking to Australians. All we know of Bristol is it's a punchline to a two Ronnies joke. <laughs> Right. What do we need to know about Bristol? Bristol, Jack. Bristol is in the West Country of England. Right. How's the accent go? I can't do a Bristol accent. All I can say is, all right, Jack? All right, Jack. Want a scrumpy? (laughs) What's a scrumpy? Scrumpy is the local drink of Bristol. Don't make hell, you don't know tone. I saw you sitting on a two litre flagon this morning. It's the most hardcore cider I'd say you can drink. Will they be serving up scrumpies tonight (laughs) at the Aria? In big bowls with umbrellas (laughs) in the top (laughs) tone. Cue up behind me. (laughs) All right, Nina, well, I think our allotted time is up. There's somebody waving a flag at us. You've already got a scrumpy with you here on the panel. You're wasting no time, are you? (laughs) Australian bubble. (laughs) Get it into you. All right, well, we'll see you there at the uh, Aria Awards this evening inside, of course. And uh, see you in a minute. All the best in New Zealand as well. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. <laughs> You're listening to Martin Malloy right around the big brown land. If everything's been plugged in correctly, people, that was a uh, woman by Nina Cherry who's left the studio. And there's roadies running around on all fours in the studio, <laughs> connecting stuff, unplugging stuff. Yes, we're broadcasting from the foyer of the Sydney Exhibition Centre today. 
Home of really? the ARIA Awards, that's right. And let's welcome somebody else now who will be at the ARIAs tonight. She won't be singing nothing. She's not presenting anything. Uh. She'll just be sitting back, lagering on while pointy <laughs> silver accolades get piffed towards her table. Come on, Mick, let's do the Macarena as we welcome <laughs> Tina Arena. Oh, look out! Yeah, Look at you. What is going on? Are people handing out drinks in the foyer or something? Oh. Everyone's going to be red assed by the time these awards like hit the uh, hit the stage. Well, you know, Mick, it's much better when you're feeling a little bit more like a rat with a fat ass. <laughs> yes. Isn't it? Yes. There's nothing is better. that the title oh, for the yes. new album, Tina? It is. It is, actually. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. How mm. are you? Uh, very good. Now, last time we saw you was uh, in Adelaide for the Ra Awards. You popped in very quickly. I did. And, popped uh, in and I popped out. Popped out, picked up a swag at trophies. What happens if you win something tonight? There's got to be no room left on your mantelpiece. Well, it's funny. My old lady came over on Sunday, yesterday yes. actually, and she said, oh, she said, I, I think you might have to buy a little bit of a cabinet for all your awards, oh, love, because you're running out of space. I said, oh, geez, thanks, Mum. Are you going to buy it for me? <laughs> and, and what, what is... what they should give you tonight if you win something? An awards cabinet. This is, <laughs> this is true. Instead of a, a trophy. It would be nice, Mick. I tell mm. you, it would be lovely. Is that the sort of talk you get when Mrs Arena pops round? Uh, just stop <laughs> leaving your, uh, your accolades lying about the floor, tidy them up, do something with yourself? Are you going to get a proper job, Tina? Yes. Are you well, getting that? I had that for years, and now she's not really complaining about my job because it pays oh, okay. better than hers. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. And I'd best not tell her what. I'd be, best not tell you what she does. Now, yeah. speaking about uh, going around to your place, there's a little article in uh, the TV Week today mm -hmm. in uh, Molly's humdrum, mm -hmm. and Molly talks about coming around to your place uh, to watch the footy. Does that happen very often? <laughs> well, he, he's a local, actually. He tends right. to hang around, Mole, you know. He's yeah. just... Yes, he, yes, he certainly he does. In, he, <laughs> Listen, this is a sentence that caught my attention. He's, he's talking about uh, you working with Jewel. He's talking about a, a friend of mine, actually. Yes, yeah. as I lay on Tina's bed, <laughs> she and Jewel got out the guitar and did some songs. Now, we've heard that Molly Meldrum, you know, gets about. Yeah, he doesn't mind getting about. <laughs> He's lying on your bed while you you and another female singer are performing yeah. a few numbers. Mm. Uh, is that a typical night round at your place? It Well, it was the first. <laughs> and uh, I just, look, i gotta, I got to say, the title is a classic, In Bed with Tina and Jewel. <laughs> oh, my old lady will love that headline. She'll be treasuring that one, I tell you. And, you know... It's you... not a common occurrence, Tone. Right. But, you know, occasionally after a couple of lagers and, and when your team's lost and you're a bit upset, you gotcha. know, anything can really happen, mate. We've, we've heard a rumour that uh, Molly's a, a bit of a ladies' man and, uh, <laughs> you know, I know that's an ugly industry rumour that's going about. <laughs> just a rumour at this stage. <laughs> yes, there he it is. It's definitely just a rumour. Now, just let me read that sentence again. As I lay back on Tina's bed. That's mm. fantastic. Isn't that the classic? <laughs> now, what about, uh, you were telling us uh, recently about uh, the tributes to you on the internet. Is that right? People are setting up Tina Arena, uh, what Websites. would you call them? Webs or Websites. Or Websites. Shrines. That's yeah, the they, when they set up, it's called a shrine. It is, a little, little bit like a shrine. I have this uh, fan from South Africa. Right. And... Uh, the name's left me at this moment. Well, I'm not surprised after a glass of fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, uh, F.W. de Klerk, <laughs> would it be him? <laughs> he, he gets out and surfs the net of a Friday evening. Oh, yeah. No. Can I get him off? I don't know what his name is, but he seriously, this guy's website, mm. I would have to say, he knows more about me than I know about myself. Really? Yeah, mm. I just don't know where he gets the information. He obviously pays somebody very well. Right. Or um. Is that handy? Wait till he finds out about Molly. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to be yeah, very upset. He's going to be peeved. Is, is that handy though? Whenever you've forgotten a bit of key information about yourself, you can just turn on the computer is, and you mate, know, uh, where is. did I leave my aria? Oh, That's just right. Kidding. Oh, behind the couch. It's okay. In there on page oh, it's five. a doorstop. <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, that's where I left it. Great. <laughs> and, you know, it's uh, very interesting. Tina, we mentioned the new album. Uh, how's it going? Are you getting a lot of record company execs calling up saying it's got to be this, it's got to be that? that oh, well, everybody loves to throw their five cents worth in. I mean, that's mm. standard, isn't it? Yes. Mm. I'm yes. sure you guys get, you know, I mean, you know, I, I gave you a couple of good tips last week, didn't I, Tony? <laughs> oh, so, yeah. told you, mate, I reckon you could do this or, <laughs> the next you know, one. what do you think about trying that, mate? Uh, yeah, we, we, we're getting it's into going the... going on? Have you uh, two been out hitting the town together or something? I haven't told you yet, Mick, the There'll be a picture of you on Tina's bed shortly. <laughs> What's going on? I'll be in a, a, a Tina Molly sandwich. <laughs>
<laughs> so, so the two of you have been out well, of the town. Be ugly. You've been yeah. hobnobbing. What happened? Don't want to Plus, tell you about this, but yeah. there's going to be a lot more chick ballads on the new album. <laughs> Less with the comedy, more of uh, Celine Dion gear. Okay. That's all oh. Tina's idea. Yes, it is all my concept. Now, the writing has actually been fantastic. Mm. I've um, been spending a little bit of time in America, which has been really interesting, and obviously I need to come back home on a regular basis. Yes. Um, uh, it's called therapy <laughs> and my reality check. So I do that i like it but the album is at a very very good stage at the moment i'm happy to right. let you know and H have uh, you pressed a play and record at the same time yet is anything on tape <laughs> well there are they're very tragic demos on tape. Okay. <laughs> and I make them very simple. Yeah. Well, you, should, you can put them out as a... Uh, well, there you go. There you are. They're yeah. as basic as that. You get together with Tricky. Yeah. He'll knock something up to back that. Oh, You'll yeah. be sitting on gold. I will, mate. I'll be bringing home the bacon. <laughs> will you be bringing home the bacon tonight, Tony? Yeah. I don't know, you know. Now, if I you win, to be very honest with you, I don't know. And, yeah. And, it doesn't really matter. It's the the thing is the fact that we're all together and we're going to have a great night. You that's... must be uh, you must be sick of thanking people. You must be just <laughs> <laughs> just turn up everywhere everywhere you go and yeah. like you can't turn up. You can't you know come out of the bathroom probably without thanking a list of people. Well, I mean everywhere you go you're thanking thanking thanking. Well the list of of thank yous yeah. does get. Have you got it committed long. to memory now? Just get up and rattle them off. Yeah, well, you do. You have to. You mm. know, that's part of life. Mm. H have you considered uh, just getting up and uh, doing something really ugly, just abusing a lot of people like Bert did at the ladies a few years ago? Well, it would, it's, it's, a, it's a fabulous concept, Tony. <laughs> 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 However, I don't know about... Um, I don't know how the mentality would really yeah. deal with it, you yeah. know. Yeah, okay, so. well, I'm, I'm just looking for, you know, I'm thinking image change. Oh, of course, mm. but, mate, I'm always open to things. If you want to write something down, then I could <laughs> maybe get up and say tonight and pay tribute to yourselves. I'd be more than happy oh, to do we'd so. love a mention. Would you? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we'll get to work on a bit of a speech. That's it. Leave it with us. Oh, well, <laughs> we'll you never slip, know. We'll slip it to you just before you go up. Mate, you never know. You guys could get Album of the Year next year. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, well. Yeah, yeah okay, okay next. Pinch me. Oh, good. Oh, All there's right. Liam Gallagher. Oh, isn't he handsome? Mine, isn't he? Is mm. are you have you fallen for the Gallagher brothers, Tina, oh. or are they too stroppy for your liking? Oh, I don't know. He's a little bit too rebellious for my liking. Mm. Mm. You know. What's he rebelling against? I've got no idea, mate. I wish we all knew. <laughs> if we had a bloody idea, well, maybe we might understand it. He's a very deep man, Liam Gallagher. He's on about. He if he's a on about anything, person, isn't he? he well, it, well put, Tony. If he's on about anything, he's on about better room service at your posh hotels. Yes. That's what I can work mm. out from his wow. uh, extensive interviews. I wonder what he'd be getting for room service, though. Be very interesting, wouldn't it? <laughs> uh, kicking the pants, I think. <laughs> all right, Tina. That's thanks. on the house. <laughs> That's on the house, all right. <laughs> thanks for joining us today. Well, yeah, Tina, good luck tonight. Thank so, you very have much. Have fun. You and too. let's hear some Tina Arena now on Martin Malloy. Radio Gladiator. Oh, beautiful. There she is, Tina Arena, performing mm. Chains live <laughs> here in the foyer of the Sydney Exhibition Centre. That's Jeez. where Martin Malloy is coming to you from today, people. We've set up the little card table. Uh, the Arias are on tonight, so we're just basically preying on anybody who wanders past. Yep. Roping them into the program, but if you're sick of the Arias, don't worry, because Radio Gladiators is coming up, and we'll also have Sticky Beaks in the next hour, along with uh, Jimmy Barnes and Danny Hines uh, joining Good. us as well, live on the program. But I believe we've got someone on the line now, Mickey. Who is it? It's Who's an it? old buddy of ours. It's, uh, well, the head honcho down at Mushroom Records and indeed our mentor. It's Michael Gadinsky. How are you, Michael? Hey, lad. <laughs> How's it going? It's going great. It could be even better tonight. Okay, I'm sure you'll be setting yourself for a big one. Hey, you uh, think you've got a bag of you tonight, Michael? I think we could do all right. I mean, I'm, I'm really hoping for my two best mates to uh, to nail the comedy award. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Right. Is uh, Barnsley nominated, is he? What's, what's... <laughs> That's no, I'm actually talking about you, Rap Rabble. Oh. Okay. And if we do, if, say, we were to pull it off, Michael, is it, we've got our pens and papers here. Who should we be thanking? Well, I'll leave that to you to work out. Just get your next bloody CD together, boys. <laughs> yes. It's in the shop. It's up on blocks as we speak, Michael. No, Not long to uh, go now. It's getting a bit of a retooling. Now, Michael, have you got any surprises in store tonight? Are you, uh, you know, are you engineering something behind the scenes even as we speak? A surprise appearance by somebody, anything like that? Ah, uh, look, I think, um, I think there'll be enough surprise without me having to engineer anything. I think, um, I think there's some great talent nominated tonight and hopefully, uh, a couple of different names will uh, come through and win some awards tonight. Uh -huh. and you're a betting man, we all know that, Michael. What's your net bet? What's the one the punter should be on? Look, I think that um, uh, I think it'll be sure to nick something tonight. I mean, after all the years of 
great music and great credibility. It's uh, it's certainly long overdue, and I think. Uh, uh, the combination of him and Kylie is a bit mm -hmm. irresistible, isn't it? Yes, mm -hmm. and, and did you have much to do with setting that deal up there, Michael? Um, it's certainly an idea that um, uh, Nick had been talking about for a long, long time. And, uh, um, you know, he, he was in a rough of the song and, we, and um, a couple of us sat around the office and thought, Jesus, this, this really worked, and uh, we sent it over to Kylie and she loved the idea. Oh, who's that on the phone, Michael? That could be Nick um, having a go at me now. I see. Is it true that you've uh, got an idea for his next album? You want him to do more sort of uh, Cockney, knees up, Chaz and Dave style, style work on the next album? Is that the new sound for Nick? Well, listen, I, you know, look, with Nick Cave, anything could happen. But, uh, the day that he'd let me interfere with his music or that I'd want to interfere with his music would... Uh, certainly be uh, the day that I'd give up the business. I see. And, and Michael, will you be picking any fights tonight? Are you one of these flamboyant record company executives who likes to go along to awards nights and just pick fights with people? No, look, I'd rather party and have fun, but I'd certainly jump in the uh, in the way if someone was going to take a, swim, uh, a swing at uh, any of my artists, that's for sure. All right, well, I'll be sticking very close to you tonight, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's a few people we'll be avoiding this evening. We well, might be... Let's, uh... hope, let's hope it's a, a brown night tonight, boys. And it's going to be brown, 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 Michael, for Australia. All right, thanks Hello. for talking to us, Michael. <laughs> and you've got, you've got somebody Thanks else. for talking to everyone. <laughs> you've got about three lines going. Hang on, just keep listening, because we'll pick Hello. up some... Hello. This is good. Who's this? Hello. Hello. Who's this? <laughs> Hello. Hello, Michael. Is that Emma? No, oh, I, no I think it might be at your end, buddy. <laughs> yes, it's another big-time record company deal being minted on the phones right I there. I think it's Betty Hines complaining that I haven't picked her as a short-five bet tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, you get back to business, and thanks All for right, talking to us. Send my regards to, uh, to Big Jimmy and make sure uh, we give love a lover a big spin later on. Oh, we will, buddy. We'll be doing that, and uh, we will also be back in a few moments, people, with something you can jump into with both feet. That's Radio Gladiators. Martin Malloy. Brought to you by Coca-Cola, the ultimate summer refreshment. Martin Malloy coming to you live from the foyer of the 1996 mm. ARIA Awards. And just quiet for a sec, mate. Let's just see if you can feel the showbiz excitement. Mm. Listen to it's that. electric. Oh, it's, it's fantastic. The atmosphere. Touch me. Don't pinch me. <laughs> <laughs> Make sure this isn't a dream. No, we're really here. And uh, let's have something of an entirely different nature, shall we? Peace. <laughs> Radio Gladiators, your chance to represent your state and win fame, glory, and fabulous prizes. Here's today's challenge. I think it's fair to say that the Arias has the potential to be a top night, Mickey. Oh, I think so. But let's stop crapping on about them now, shall we? Mm -hmm. Just for a moment as we ask the listeners to tell us about their top nights. Oh, we like doing this on a Monday, don't we? Yes. Over the weekend, what happened and did it constitute a top night? Did you have a top night over the weekend? Uh, yeah, well, top nights are pretty hard to have these days, Tone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> especially if your coach's name is Rodney E. Oh, I see. You remember the Sydney Swans, no yeah. sex Friday night? Well, didn't work out for the did they? Oh. Didn't. And I was watching the actual pre-match entertainment at the yeah. AFL. You know that huge inflatable Wayne Carey doll which didn't go up? Yeah. You know why? Why was that? Three Swans players tried to have sex with it. Oh, tried it right? again. The they were horny, Tone. <laughs> they right? were horny. They couldn't wait. They right. had to do something. But obviously the, uh, the not having sex the night before paid off for them. Mm. Uh, well, no, it didn't. <laughs> but, you know, I think the theory has been proved once and for all. Yeah. Uh, I'll be doing that again next exactly. year. They'll be going like the clappers all night. I'm trying to get any sleep. I'm trying to think of a polite way to put it. Thank you. Going like the clappers there will suffice. <laughs> now, I smoothed over the cracks for you, Tone. Uh, let me tell you about my uh, top night. I went and saw the Nutty Professor. Oh, how was that? Because I figured everyone's going to be footy mad. Mm. Good time to go to the yeah. movie. So a whole bunch of us went along to the Nutty Professor. Uh, it wasn't a great uh, night for the Nutty Professor. Failed to fully inflate, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but a pretty good performance on ground. <laughs> I'm still saying. I've said it before on this program, he's yeah. not nutty. Yeah. It should be the fat professor. The fat professor. It was the nutty professor when it was Jerry Lewis. That mm. was fine. He was he had mm. nutty teeth, he had a nutty yeah. voice, he had a nutty walk. This is just a fat bloke. This is lard ass professor. <laughs> There's nothing nutty about it. This is wobble bottom professor. It's the fat professor. But <laughs> they're right. calling it the nutty professor. Here's That's something... just in this country. I think it's released under different titles all around the world. <laughs> is it really? Yeah. Well, a uh, pretty funny thing happened in the foyer. I'm standing there and three kids or about probably 12 or 13 mm. come walking up to me and I'm going is this some kind of religious group I didn't mm. know what it was they were all wearing suits grey suits and shirts and ties 
five sizes too big for them. Mm. They all look like David Byrne in that uh, <laughs> that video. Yeah, yeah. And they've come up, and one of them sort of uh, decided to be the spokesman. He's come up to me and go, mate, can you get us three tickets to a racer? I'm going, what do you mean? Well, you have to be over 15 to get in. Okay. And I'm thinking, that's, you know, you're dressed in your dad. You look like the incredible shrinking man. <laughs> that's not helping. <laughs> that's making things worse. You're not going to get in stealing a few seats out of your dad's wardrobe. So that was your night. Nutty professor and hanging around with little blokes in big suits. <laughs> that's right. There's a fantastic <laughs> night here. There's a top night. Can our listeners go Here's better one. than I that? I had one. I had one. Tony, this is, you know those mystery flights oh, yeah. you take? You yeah. don't know where you're going. And right. you take one. Yeah, I, I took one of those, except it was in a cab. It was a was mystery it? drive. Yeah, I thought I knew where I was going, but yeah. all the driver had other ideas. <laughs> Two and a half hours circumnavigating an inner city suburb. And turn, it wasn't good. The it wasn't good. We <laughs> to follow it up. What had happened was uh, we were going to have dinner, and mm. by the time we got there, we were so late. Uh, our dinner plans had been spoiled. But you know what I did? You know what I did to boot it home as a top night? What to, did you do? To really, like, cement it in the memory, to make it one of those special ones that my particular partner will remember for all time. What did you do? What thinking was your secret? Thinking quickly. Thinking on my feet, right off the top of my head, right? I go to the nearest hotel, mm. your big, plush, luxury hotel. Gotcha. We get in the elevator. We, I say, pick a floor. We pick a floor. 18, ding, the door opens. We walk around, just feasting off the trays sitting out the front of hotel rooms that have already been used. The okay, sure, the, the odd sandwich, it's got a bite out of it. Some of it's, you know, it's never complete, but it was lovely. The fantastic. Top notch. That is a top night right there. <laughs> Stealing food and, for me, helping kids sneak into the movies. We want the listeners to go one better, and have we got a prize? Yes, indeed. If you have the toppest of top nights, people, thank you, Gracie, on the organ back at Martin Valoy Central, uh, you'll win the ultimate in indulgence with accommodation for you and a friend in a luxury five-star hotel in your hometown. If there's not a five-star hotel in your hometown... <laughs> Not naming any names. We'll get you to the nearest yeah. one. It's dinner for two. It's massages. It's treatments. It's all the gear. It's thanks to our friends at Lipton's and their new range of herbal flavours. Is that Gracie? Is that Gracie or is that David Helfgott warming up for tonight's performance? It's hard to tell, isn't it? He's going to have a top night. Call us and tell us about yours here at Martin Malloy and because we're in the foyer of the Arias, we have a new number for you today, people. This is the number to call. 1-800-151-100. Here's Martin Malloy. That was John Farnham with A Simple Life. And if we're sounding a little different today, it's mm. because we're not in our normal premises. We're in the foyer of the uh, Sydney Entertainment uh, Exhibition Centre, rather, where the ARIA Awards will be taking place this evening. Correct. And we're hoping for a bit of ARIA's action. Mm -hmm. Not much so far. No, no. no. It won't be happening, though. No, I'll take your eye off them for a minute. Not much in the way of photographer <laughs> punching at this point. But nonetheless, we're going to attempt to do a Radio Gladiators uh, mm -hmm. from the card table here in the foyer. OK. Who have we got on the line? We're talking top nights. We want to hear about them. Who's got a Mickey? Well, Jason reckons he's got one for us. Ain't that right, Jase? Yeah, how you going? Not too bad, mate. What are you sitting on? No, the other night, uh, last night actually after the grand final, we, me and a few friends went to Sizzlers and a friend of mine had a few too many beers and decided to have the ice cream straight out of the dispenser. Gee, well, mm. that's, that's the makings of a top night right there. You're and in after, front. After that, we went on to um, City Rails up in Brisbane and had dollar drinks and we ended up bumping into a pretty young lass and she ended up being a Cleo model. Oh, oh really? I believe so, she said. And yes. what happened? Oh, we ended up going, I drove her back, went... Took a cab back to her uncle's place. And we stayed there. Didn't get up to anything, but I've got the number, so it's be fine with her tomorrow. Yeah, well done. So you've met a Cleo model, and uh, she's taking you back to her uncle's place. Yeah. <laughs> you dog. Yeah, crazy guy. Well, can we top that, Mickey? I don't know if we can. Let's see if Sharon or Sean, I think it's uh, Sean, actually. You there, Sean? Yep. Sorry for nearly calling you Sharon. What uh, did your top night involve? I crashed my old enemy from high school engagement party where they had a tub set up on the bar and ran up cocktails on it with a group of friends of mine. Gee, well, uh, when you say enemy, what do you mean by that exactly? A Dalek. Oh, um, she was a real snob at high school. And... Right, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Sean, from the way your voice is sounding at the moment, mix headed on the head, your enemy would be Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, Sean, That's that sounds great, but we're going to have to actually lose that call because uh, there's flames coming out of the phone line at this end. There's so running around, doing the one-two. Well, that's, it sounded like a top night. Mm. Let's move on to Michael. Michael, are you there? 
Michael. Oh dear. <laughs> Jeez. We've lost Michael. Uh, well. But what what happened to Michael? Uh, M. He was, according to this sheet of paper, I've just Thank been handed. Went to one of the top, <laughs> one of the tapings of the early Tony Barber episodes of Wheel of Fortune. Is that a top night? <laughs> That's a top night. It's obviously why he's scarp and he's chickened out. All oh, right. He had to think about it and thought, nah. Let's move on to Carol. Are you there, Carol? Yes. Oh, good on you. What did your top night involve? Well, we went out for celebrations after the Roo Boys won the grand final. Oh, yes. And my sister had a little bit too much to drink and got on the bar at the place we're at and done the Macarena. Mm -hmm. She did and the Macarena? Yeah. Don't you she know all the moves? <laughs> and all the guys liked it. They all stopped and stared. But uh, when she hopped down, thinking she looked beautiful, uh, one of the wives came up and tipped a whole jug of beer over her head. Oh, dear, oh, dear. <laughs> it did look very pretty after it. <laughs> and did it uh, lead to a slap a and cat a fight? Scuffle? It did. Yeah. Oh, a right. jug of water over the head. Surely that would have only made her more popular with the lads. Oh, no. <laughs> Maybe with the lads, but not with her. All right. All right. Well, that's a top night. That sounds like everyone was having fun. Where was I? <laughs> I should have been there. Have we got Rebecca with us? You there, Rebecca? Yes, I'm here. Did you have a top night? No, unfortunately I didn't. I so, spent the night waiting at home for my boyfriend to take me to a barbecue. Waiting at home for your boyfriend to take you to a barbecue? What happened to him? Well, I got a call at 9.30 in the morning after having a good night's sleep and mm. his boss told me that the police had taken him back to the Navy ship because he was blind drunk and had fallen asleep at the front of McDonald's. <laughs> oh, so obviously then you forgave him completely and you, you obviously relieved that he was fine. Yes? No, he's in a lot of trouble. <laughs> and where is he now? Is he uh, in the brig, as it were? No, he had to stay and do a duty at work. <laughs> and when do you get to see him next? Tonight, when he gets home. And will it be big smacks for him? Oh, definitely. <laughs> Gee, will you will you give him a boot and the big flared pants? Oh yeah. Gee, He's so... <laughs> and is that uh, typical behaviour for members of our armed services? Uh, blind drunk falling asleep outside McDonald's? Definitely. Is. <laughs> In your experience, yes. Yeah, that's a, that's how you graduate. That's how you get that elusive third strike. I'd like to see more of that kind of action in those Navy ads. You don't mm. see much of that. There's lots of down in the control room pointing at uh. computers and oscilloscopes. Let's not much like... falling asleep outside McDonald's. There you are. <gasps> Face down in your own. Navy. All right, thanks, Rebecca. Finally, we've just got time for Rhett. Are you there, Rhett? Yes, I'm here. You've had a top night, haven't you? Yes, I have, right. <laughs> Give us the details. Okay, well, my brother and I and my younger sister and a friend of, a friend of hers, we, we, went, we went to the beach and it's sort of a bush walk through to the beach. My brother and I got there quite a bit earlier than them, so we've, um, we thought we'd go in skinny dipping. Oh, great Australian tradition. Okay, so yeah, far so good. Yep. Just in case anything went wrong, we, we took our undies in with in our, in our hands, <laughs> and like as soon as we've seen them come out of the bushes, we've done the handstand in the nude. <laughs> and they predictably they run straight for our clothes. They've grabbed our clothes and they started running on off back to the car and the car keys are with the with the clothes. Yeah. Uh. So they've got in the car and then we get back to the car and they've locked the doors and they start driving off without us in right. the combi. Yeah. So my brother and I were in our soaking wet undies. <laughs> we we jump on the back of the combi holding on. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Dun, da, da. Oh, and then she drives through the main street back to our hotel apartment. We're just ducking behind the combi, still hanging on in our undies. Let's <laughs> see. Let, let me just see if I've got all the elements on board here. Yeah. Uh, underpants, uh, moving vehicle, uh, handstands in the nude. Uh, is that a top one? they won. <laughs> all right, that's our winner today won. here at Radio Gladiators. And I, I haven't seen that nude handstand since Frankie J tried it on that Channel 7 mm. special. But uh, you've got yourself, well, it's uh, well, it's a visit to a luxury five-star hotel in your hometown, <laughs> sir. Rhett, I don't know if they go for that kind of behaviour, but, uh, well, you can try it out and get back to us with the results. That's all thanks to Thank uh, very our very much. good friends at Lipton's. Good on your team, and thanks for playing Radio Gladiators. Everybody will be back with more. Arias or pre-Arias action in the next hour and amongst our guests, Jimmy Barnes. This is Martin Malloy, the program that makes Michael Hutchins say... Well, baby, the play. Brought to you by Coca-Cola, the ultimate summer refreshment. And in this hour of Martin Malloy coming to you live from the 1996 Aria Awards... 
We'll play well. Sticky Beaks, you can get involved in that. We'll be on the yak with Denny Hines. And next up, we'll let Barnsley off the leash. All thanks to Coca-Cola. It's the ultimate summer refreshment. <laughs> That's Meryl Bainbridge right there with mouth here at Martin Malloy. It's the second hour, and do we sound different, Mickey? No, I think so. It doesn't matter, though. <laughs> it's a special occasion. You that, can sound different. That's right. We're coming to you from the foyer of the Sydney Exhibition Centre, where tonight <laughs> the ARIA Awards will be in full flight. Somebody's wandered out to have a word from us. Uh... Where's the bathrooms? <laughs> <laughs> we haven't introduced you, sir. This bloke here, well, he used to be Australian, then he went all French for a while. Now he's Australian again. His new single's out now, and you can see him taking it for a drive this evening on the Arias. Please be upstanding for Jimmy Barnes. Ah, both class, both class. <laughs> Are you Australian again, Jimmy? Uh, yeah, I'm sort of confused at the moment. I think, mm. yeah. Sort of mm. Scottish, Aussie, sort of yeah. French, you know, Scandinavian <laughs> how, type of thing, yeah. How Scottish can you go with that accent, Jimmy? How Sc oh, what do you want there, son? Oh. Can, you, can your mother saw her? <laughs> I can start. I Intelligible. Have to talk, I, have to, yeah, I have to talk like that after a couple of drinks in Glasgow. Otherwise, oh, nobody can understand the bloody thing you're saying. <laughs> now, what about what's going on inside at the Aries? Have you seen much action today? No action? There's action aplenty in there. No, I, uh, I got there about one o'clock for the rehearsals and... Uh, mm. Oh, what's the rehearsal? Just stood around, that, <laughs> just stood around. Just stood around for hours. Well, what are you rehearsing? You know the lyrics. Know you know the, the drill. I mean, you're they, out there. What do they want me for? I know the bloody song, you know. Uh, but you know, but there's, there's a lot of good things going on. I guess you know. Mm. I, good, I caught a couple of young bands in there. I like you know Powderfinger. I've seen them playing. That was oh, yes. They're going to be a bit of a highlight, I think. Have so you seen the Gurge? The Gurge? No, I didn't see them actually. I missed the Gurge. <laughs> so you, you're in there rehearsing, and I'm going to tell me, have you got any tricks up your sleeve tonight? Because Yourself with the uh, with the old chisels did turn on a performance once at the Countdown Awards where I believe yeah. you went to town on the set. Yeah, there was no, stuff but no, being this... hurled. I know there the was guy... drum kids flying. Are you up to it? Is I it know, going to happen I, again? No, I'm going to redecorate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually sort of I'm going to repair the old Countdown set. For the, you know. You're just going to move furniture <laughs> yeah, no, around. Sort of, I think this would look nice over here. You know, you know. I thought it's just sort of a twist on the thing. No, I know the guy who built the set, so I can't wreck it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. What? What if? What, tell us about the worst thing you ever did on live television, Barnes. I remember um, you. Uh, May, causing I'm, a bit of trouble over the... let me let me count the ways yeah. there's so many so many bad things i've done on live television uh, i don't know i think a couple of the visard shows were pretty good oh yeah yeah you know um uh, they, they actually the first time i went on visard and he was you know he's like he's a prick anyway so, <laughs> <laughs> so i went on the show you know and, hey, I'm, I'm, i was waiting for that? you to argue Tom. Yeah. I, I was going to come, come in and say something jimmy but i'm just <laughs> i'm checking my notes so well, uh, anyway so you know i went on and he started on me so like i thought right i'm just gonna have to snot him you know <laughs> But, you know, so we left the building instead. Michael said, let's go, Jim, let's go out of here. So I left. Next time I go on, of course, he's not there. And, uh, you know, and uh, I think Stubbsy was doing the show. Mm -hmm. And so I go, out, I go down, to the, I get to the show, and they said, oh, have, you know, Steve Weizard's dressing room. He's not here. Uh. So I left little messages for him all over. I got a texter. I got a texter, and everywhere you'd look, you know, he'd lift up the toilet seat. You're, you're a prick. <laughs> <laughs> Open up his sock drawer, you know. <laughs> God knows what else I wrote. But all over his room, he's been finding them for years, I think. Yeah. Well, we've got a big, big and that fruit a... basket coming your way, Jimmy Bar. <laughs> Bloody beauty, mate. Can I get the uh, holiday of a choice in the town of your... Uh, what is it? Oh, your life. We'll, we'll see what we can arrange. <laughs> now, we were talking about you behind your back recently. Oh, on I the know program. about that, yeah. Oh, did you get I've the... heard about it, yeah. Yes, we were talking about your acting career. What are you up to, Jimmy Barnes? Listen, mate, as, a, as an actor, I would make a lovely bricklayer. Oh, you know, really? Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not really that good at it what happened was i went i went and did a, a short course at nida mm. uh and mainly i did it because my wife was going to do a course in script writing and i thought right. oh good this is interesting i'll go down and do something so there was an introduction to acting and i went down and i was like you know i didn't know what to expect i went down there and i thought all right i'll have a go at this mm -hmm. and it was really bloody hard it was much harder yeah. than i expect and i got there and and the first 10 minutes of the thing i thought well, i'm out of here you know this is this yeah. is uh, this is far too embarrassing for me you know how can i be, how can i be cool when i'm wriggling like a snake on the ground you know? oh, that's, that's <laughs> and, the, and that was on the way <laughs> <laughs> that's back in steve Weiser's yeah, dressing room exactly so what are they doing they've got you playing theater style games so you're passing oh, the imaginary stuff. canary no yeah that's sort of biting the heads off <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, no but but in the in, in after the first 10 minutes i thought right i've got you know like because i'm a stubborn bastard i said right i'll stick it out and i'll have a go at this and it it was actually very interesting. It was a really bloody hard thing to do. Mm. I got there thinking actors are all, you know, like up themselves and full, you know, big egos and all that. And it's actually probably to be a good one. It's the opposite. You've got to have mm. no ego. And so, you know, that I didn't fit in at all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. So I mean, you're turning up in the tights. <laughs> We're yeah. in the tights. Were you ready to yeah, go? I, do you have I, a skull in one hand? I've got my own skull. <laughs> yeah, I have my own skull, you know, my own head. Uh, 
No, it was, it was interesting, but I, I just don't know if it's me, really, you know? Mm. I'm, I'm comfortable with an audience when I can scream at them, you know? And, uh, and threaten them and intimidate them, mm. and, you know? But to actually go up there and try and be subtle is not really... <laughs> right, it's right. not something I'm good at, you know? <laughs> so, so we won't be seeing you playing yourself at the Jibby Bar uh, No, I don't think so, no. Who's going to do that? Oh, some really good-looking guy, I think. <laughs> Well, lots of talent, I hope. <laughs> Brad Pitt is Jimmy Barnes. Brad Pitt. Yeah. <laughs> so, now, what about uh, all this talk about uh, the chisels uh, getting back together? No, I, I haven't heard about it. It's all nonsense, <laughs> is it? Well, I hear it every year. Yeah. I hear it every year. Yeah. Um, no one's called you? No. I, I would have thought you'd be early on, you know, in the list of <laughs> calls to make. I, I would like to think so, you know. But, you know, you know listen, I think if there's a record going, I'll get the nod. Yeah. You know, I could, okay. get, I could get a Guernsey. Yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. A, a couple of other people. Yeah, they'd probably get to you eventually. You know, take, you, come on in. Look, we've finished the record. Can you come and say hello? On it, you know? and, and what about this new record of yours? What do people need to know about that? Uh, pff, nothing. It's a new single uh, mm. called Lover Lover, which you'll play in a while, I think. Um, mm -hmm. If Michael Gineski slipped you the money, then. Uh, hey, it's it's been on the blow. The oh, check's right, cleared. check's cleared, OK. Um, <laughs> And then uh, I've got the album, uh, Barnes Hits, which is a co greatest hits mm -hmm. compilation coming out October 14th or something like that. Yep, mm -hmm. that's a good guess. Look at sounds it, pretty it. good. And how, uh, do you, how do you put together that? Do you, do you go out for a drive in the car and listen to them all to choose the running order? I actually did, actually. I, I, made, I, I got there and I got to the studio and I you know, remixed some stuff and compiled it. I thought, yeah, this is easy. Do this, you know. Fantastic. They made me a, a copy of the thing. You know, I got in the car, stuck it in. I went, oh. Oh, can't start with that. Quick. Oh, can't have that second, you know. You know so I, I panicked and redone it again, and I haven't listened to it since. So I and then you good. say remix, what do you mean by that? You're not putting dance beats under the no, moon. No, 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 no. It sounds no, like actually, a Macarena style no, feel to it. It's not the M people version of KC. It, it, it could be, it could be. It's sort of a, it's a Macarena KC. I don't think so. No, no, I actually got there and I took a lot of stuff out of it, actually. There was a, there's a couple of songs like Ride the Night Away, which is a song which I thought was a great song. Hmm. And then I, I recorded it with, the, with this great band, you know, Mick Fleetwood and bloody, you know, Bill Payne from Little Feet and you know uh, Charlie Sexton on guitars and I, got, I, I had to go leave from recording go straight to touring in Australia and so these Americans mixed it for me oh, and, they, right. and, and you know what yeah. happens when you leave the oh, Americans yeah, they yeah. make it for someone else that's uh, the old number 27 I got it they put the same for the album the album's out I get the album I go oh my god what is that you know and it sounded like shite you know? so, uh, so basically I had to um, I went to the studio because I couldn't listen to the record again after that uh, for many years and, uh, and so I went in the studio and, uh, and I thought well I've got to try and make this sound good expecting the worst and I got in there I seen the stuff I recorded and then next to it is all this, the American overdubs <laughs> and I just went pull, pull them out it sounds fantastic again so right. it's, back, it's back on yeah. so well, it's exactly the same only without the bullshit if, mm. if you want to hear Bonesy's new album Not Shite Anymore <laughs> it'll be out in the shop soon and if you want to see him performing live on the Arias tonight all the best Jimmy no worries mate Have thanks Anderson see you guys and we'll be back with more in a moment I'm Martin Malloy I feel good and there it is that's the new single from Jimmy Barnes Lover, lover, and uh, he's, he's performing that one tonight. He's in there now, trying to get it right. Just, just as he, he was leaving to go next door, I said, to him, I said, I said, well, how is the rehearsal? Is it bad? He goes, mate, I can do it. I can do it lying down. Yeah. And I said, Jimmy, why don't you? Yeah. And he's taken it on board. He's had, right? he's had a good think about it. <laughs> don't be surprised to see him flatten his back, centre stage tonight. <laughs> Belting out lover, lover. Well, I certainly hope so. And despite the uh, special arious feel of the show today, Pete. It's time to invade the privacy of fellow Australians as we play Sicky Beaks. Here's how it works. We need two complete strangers to call us here at Martin Malloy. During the break, Mick and Tony will pry into their personal lives and extract the information they need to pit our two beaks against each other. Not the girl you think you are. If you're our winning Sticky Peak, you'll bag the entire Crowded House CD back catalogue. And you'll go into the draw for one week in your very own dream house, a castle in Germany, where you'll be presented with the one millionth copy of Crowded House's recurring dream and be packed off to the concert of your choice. All thanks to Arc Music TV, only on Optus Vision. You know, a mate of mine is producing tonight's ARIA Awards and last night he let me have a sticky beak at the list of winners. Mm. Guess what? This is what they've selected as record of the year. <laughs> and for the big finale, you'll see it performed live by Jimmy Barnes and Silverchair. Okay. Remember, you heard it here first. <laughs> Thanks very much, Pete Smith. I'll be looking forward to yodelling for Jesus tonight on the <laughs> Arnsy <Arnsie> style. <laughs> Indeed. Now, uh, we just must mention the castle in Germany again, uh, Mickey. It's part mm. of the prize package. Uh, you're going into the draw. I think it's going off this Friday. Mm. Somebody is going to Germany to receive the one millionth copy of the mm. Crowded House Best of Recurring Dream.
they're going to be presented with that CD in a German castle. Mm. Now, uh, I know for a fact that Fergie, the Duchess of York, likes to holiday in Germany from Does time she? to time. Mm. I don't know if she's going to be at this particular castle, but mm. my advice to you is knock on every door before you walk in. <laughs> Because you don't want to be confronted by Fergie uh, with a couple of utensils in hand, providing the kind of demonstration they're talking about in the paper today. I think we'll have to go into this in more detail on tomorrow's program when we're back at the office. Was that in the palace? Was that in Buckingham Palace? <laughs> that, that, that bit of nude work? That bit it, of ex, uh, explanatory gear for Prince just died? It might have been. Jeez. They, they take tours through that. <laughs> they take tours through Buckingham Palace. Imagine that. You open the wrong door. Oh, exactly. Excuse me, go about your business. <laughs> right. Pardon me, your, your Highness. <laughs> Are you knighting her? <laughs> These ugly details are all uh, contained in the Duchess of York oh, Uncensored, which is the new mm. uh, biography of Fergie, uh, written by Madame Vasso, <laughs> the uh, former psychic to the Duchess of York, who used to, of mm. course, provide all her diagnoses mm. under a blue plastic pyramid. Mm. So I'm guessing it's an unauthorised biography. Oh, yes. And, mm. uh, hey, let's see if we can throw a copy of that in the prize package today. I'll see if I can tee that up. Call us if you want to be beaked, and you know how it works, you're simply answering a few uh, questions about your opponent on the segment. Yep. We're obviously going to be uh, poking into your personal life during the ad break, so be aware of that. Call us now at the new number here at Sticky Beaks, uh, just for today, 1-800-151-100. Malloy. Brought to you by Coca-Cola, the ultimate... Yes, that music tells us it's time to play Sticky Beaks mm. here at Martin Malloy, coming to you live today from the 1996 ARIA Awards. Still not much action, I'm afraid. It's all going to be happening shortly, T-Martin. I think we might have got here a bit early. That's all right. We always do. <laughs> I saw Richard Clapton wandering about before, mm. uh, trying to buy a scalp ticket, <laughs> uh, but not much in the way of, uh, you know, firepower at this stage. We're going to play... Play Sticky Beaks nonetheless, and on the line uh, from different parts of the country, we have a couple of beaks. Who are they, Mickey? Uh, we got Duncan on the line. How are you, Duncan? Uh, very good, thanks, mate. That's the way. Where are you calling from? I'm from uh, Hazelwood North, down near Morwell in country Victoria. Oh, uh, country Victoria. That sounds good. And what do you do for a crust, Duncan? Uh, I sell new houses. Oh, you do? Ever sold a castle? No, I haven't, but I'll give it a shot for you. All right. Well, you might be inspecting one very shortly if all goes well for you. Yes, uh, it's got lots of character. <laughs> Room with a view. <laughs> That's okay. it. All right, thanks, Duncan. Now, on the other line, let's meet your opponent. It's Gail. Are you there, Gail? Yes, I'm here. Where are you calling us from, Gail? Uh, I'm calling from my mobile phone, and I'm on the way home from work. Are you really? And it sounds like you're doing a bit of uh, mic work yourself down there. That's that's what I've been hearing inside at the Arias all day. <laughs> Feedback. <laughs> all right, are you ready to play Sticky Beak, Gail? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, well, here's a question for you. Let's kick things off. Gail, uh, you know, this is a question for Duncan. Mm. I've already got it wrong. Mm. Already the Sticky Beaks has started to fall over. Here you go, Duncan, a question for you. Gail thinks the ARIA Award for Best Female Artist should go to A, Tina Arena, B, Christine Arnu, C, Peter Andre. Tina Arena, A. Yes! Going for Tina Arena. Well done, Duncan. Streaking to an early lead. Here's your chance to tie it up, Gail. Duncan thinks the best video of the year was A, The Cruel Sea, Too Fast For Me, B, Swoop, Apple Eyes, C, Found under the bed of Michael Hutchins and Paula Yates. <laughs> hey. Hey, yes, indeed, you are right. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can split it up a bit. Here's a question for you, Duncan. When Gail has to take a flight in a passenger aircraft, she A, always watches the safety demonstration closely, B, never watches the safety demonstration because she's seen it before, C, heckles the attendant for doing old material. Hey. Oh, no. I'm afraid Gail's one of these people who doesn't watch the... So Is that right, Gail? That's right. I'm afraid so. Gee, so you're already familiar with all the procedures. You know where that little whistle is to be found if the plane starts going down? <laughs> <laughs> that little whistle. I always That's laugh. what she heckles. That's one of the things she says. Who's going to hear it? Who's going to hear it? When I see that little whistle, I'm just going, well, where's my paper crown and riddles to go with it? <laughs> All, All right. right, Gail. Time to answer another one. The last time Duncan was violently ill was A, due to sunstroke, 
B, after a bodgy dinner. C, when he heard the story about Fergie dying the sex aid. <laughs> uh, I'd say B. B, indeed it was. You got a bodgy dinner there, Duncan. What was it? I'm allergic to eggs, and I ate eggs one night. <laughs> well, what were you doing eating eggs if you're allergic to eggs? Oh, they were mixed in with something that I didn't know. Oh, someone's trying to poison your food. Oh, they were mixed in with some eggnog. <laughs> that would have been it. All right, well, here's a question for you, and it's about Gail. As always, the last wedding Gail attended was A, her own, B, a girlfriend's, C, cancelled when the couple answered three of host Lisa Trelaw's questions incorrectly and didn't make it through to the final. B. Yes, a girlfriend. And, uh, Duncan, do you watch I Do, I Do on Channel 10, just out of interest? No, not really. Yeah, and, and if you were getting married... Are you married yourself, do you mind me asking, Duncan? I am. You are, and uh, if you were doing it again, would you go on telly and do it? No way. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very tasteful, though, I should say that, the program. My favourite line on that show I do, I do so far, is when the host said, it's still anyone's wedding. <laughs> That's my favourite line so far of the series. It's class all the way. All right, Gail, you can put this away right here and now. I'll go for it. Duncan's favourite aftershave is A, Youp, B, Blue Stratus, C, Plugger by Lontheric. I'll go for B again. Oh, no, I'm afraid not. It is, in fact, the hard-to-pronounce, woefully misspelt youp. Yes, he's a youp man. He's well, a youp man from way back. Does that mean we're tied? Yes, we're going to have to go to the tiebreaker, Beaks. Do you know how this works? I read out three options. It's a question about Mick Malloy, and whoever comes in first gets it correct is the winner. Are you ready, Beaks? Yes. yes. Here we go. One of Mick's previous girlfriends dropped him because of a disagreement over A, sex, B, socks, C, jocks. C. A. No. B. <laughs> a dispute over socks, and that means Duncan is our winner today, but it's not all bad news for you, Gail. You've got a Martin Malloy fashion accessory. And she went for jocks. That was interesting. Mm, I wish it had been. <laughs> I turned up at school in a pair of red socks and I was told quite promptly, rudely, callously, with no regard for my feelings, you were dropped. Why is that? Because I had red socks on. Gee, <laughs> gee, I tell you what, no New Zealand is getting a date. No New Zealand yachtsman is getting a date with that woman. All right. And I'm still wearing them, Tone. I'm a bitter man. Okay, well, Duncan, guess what? You've got the full Crowded House CD back catalogue. And you've gone into the draw for that ideal fixer-upper opportunity that Castle in Germany could be yours for a week. Be listening this Friday. Terrific. OK, thanks for playing Sticky Beaks, the both of you. We'll be back with another round tomorrow here at Martin Malloy. Thank you, sir, but please don't shove your big nose in my business. Your big nose in my business. That nosy Joe, the nosiest guy I know. Dig that nose. Gee, with just a little bit here at Martin Malloy, we're coming to you live from the foyer mm. of the Sydney Exhibition Centre. The scene for tonight's Aria Spectacular. And, and the temperature's just going up about 10 degrees, T Martin. <laughs> I can feel the Aria magic in the air. <laughs> yes, let's introduce our next guest. She's up for three gongs at tonight's Arias, <laughs> and she'll be stepping up on stage for a quick yodel herself. Yodel. It's Denny Hines. <laughs> Running for president next year. Now, Danny, just to kick off, mm. tell me you're not intending to wear that particular dress. Well, for you, yes. Because that is exactly what I was going to oh, wear. I'm and sorry. now, how stupid are we going to look? We're turning body, up in the same but thing. You have titties, but my titties are better. <laughs> That's true. Might have got that National Geographic look to them, which, you know, <laughs> a bit let's scary. face it. Put them away. Isn't the ideal Aria's look, is it? it well, well, I don't know. If you'd like for, to vote for who's got the best tits, <laughs> Denny or Mick, call 1 800. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Now, Denny, it's a refreshing change. You're the first uh, Aria's guest we've had today who hasn't got a big uh, lager in the hand. Yeah, mm. I have, I have um, butterflies in my stomach and I'm eyeing up some Gatorade I see around the uh, corner. Yes, <laughs> non-alcoholic Gatorade. You see, I've always wondered, when you see these awards show on the telly, all the participants seem to be off their faces yes. and can't say the word participants. That's one of the, uh, <laughs> one of the symptoms. But uh, I've worked it out today. Obviously, they get them in rehearsing yes. at 11 in the morning yes. and they just the drinking goes on all day. 
Well, yes, I well, yes, I, I I didn't drink much. So I had a passion fruit soda water today. I lived it big. Yeah. Have you mm. seen much activity, much action inside? Uh, oh Lord, Harry's walking around. Chris is there. Nina Cherry walked by. You know, Inks were there, and mm. it's going off. Mm. It's going right off. And the the other artists nominated in your category? Are you talking, or are you just looking at each other, oh, not saying that? much, who's eyeing that? each other out? Oh, I don't know. We're vibing <laughs> each other. I've actually put a bomb under all their houses, so if I don't win, all right. Oh, I see. Now, what category? What are the prestigious categories? <laughs> Well, they've I mean, uh, given you the nod for. Uh, debut album, debut single, and most popular female. Mm. Yes. Mm. And when they say most popular female... They mean most. That means whoever's done the most blokes, most popular female. <laughs> Is that how it works? <laughs> That's how the industry works. Oh, you learn a little bit every no, day, don't sales we? Sales on bloke sales. <laughs> well, what have you what have you been up to lately, Denny? Man, I, what have I, I've just got back from London two weeks ago. Congratulations, yeah. that's going off over there. Well, how many have you sold over there? That's in, I see well, five hundred thousand. I've sold none in London because I haven't released there yet. Oh, okay. but I've sold three hundred thousand in Japan. Wow. So I've gone platinum, which is a bit nice. I want mm. double platinum, which is four hundred thousand. Um, I, I go to Singapore on Wednesday night yes. and do a little jiggy jig with Peter on the day on the day. Yeehaw, yeehaw. Mm, yes. And then on Saturday morning, I'm off to London from Singapore. Right it's now. It's just go, go, it's go. It's go, go, go gadget. When mm. you uh, do a gig with Peter Andre, is there a fight for the mirror? Is there that kind of no, thing going on? No, there's a fight on? for the ab machine. <laughs> is there? Yeah, we fight over the ab machine. And who gets the body oil? Right. you got one of those tummy trimmers, the Trevor Handy tummy I'm trimmers. I'm sponsored by just... tummy trimmers. Okay. I wish. You that's invented a hint, 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 hint. Have you got a celebrity item? Because we've noticed that's the big go these days. You've got the Jane Fleming tummy Tony. You've got the uh, the, the Trevor Handy tummy trimmer. Mm. You've got the Senator Mal Colston tummy <laughs> roller. Is the uh, Denny Hines Denny tummy Hines, trimmer on no, the way? No, Denny Hines lip colours, I reckon. Mm. Oh, really? Only for black girls. <laughs> All right. How will I sell in Australia? I that's you. what the billboard says. <laughs> only for black chicks. Only for hands off white girls. Only for blacks. Gee, well, it's not going to get the thumbs up from Pauline Hanson, I'm afraid. Oh, mm. well. Sorry, Pauline. <laughs> that's the way it goes. Now, you're doing a big number tonight. Are you nervy about that? You had to mention it, didn't you? Mm. Mm, yes, a bit scared, a bit nervous. I'm not in love as the track I'm doing, which is the next thing, thing she says as she kind of just starts mm. to feel sick in the stomach. Um, yeah, but I'm singing that. Mm. 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 And any surprises? You're bursting out of cakes? Are you being Coming dropped from the ceiling? and in a crutchless G-string, just mm. for you. Mm. Right here, Tone, I'm going to go get those tickets after <laughs> all. <laughs> yeah, so, well, it's it's a fight between you and Barnsley to get to that idea first, I, well, I suspect. Jimmy, Jimmy's going naked as well. We kind of worked it out together, because we're next door in dressing rooms, you see, so right. we sort of talked today and decided. Jeez. <laughs> wow. And he told us he wasn't going to cause any trouble tonight. I spoke to him and I said, you've been you know, for the worst shenanigans in the world and these uh, these uh, celebrity do's. And he goes, nah, playing a straight back tonight. Sure, Jim, but, sure. But uh, you're saying he's coming out stark. Not what he told me in rehearsals. Mm. But now, I'm not one to start rumours. What goes on at these awards shows? You see, we've never been to the uh, proper rock and roll awards show oh, before. Right. Denny, what kind of outrageous behaviour can we expect uh, backstage am, and indeed mm. after the uh, event's over? Backstage, a lot of confusion. Out the front, everyone looking fabulous, feeling mm. fabulous. Um, parties, well, last year there was a fight, wasn't there? Yes, we're mm. looking for a bit of fight action. I might start action. one this year. You will go for your life. Have you picked someone out at this point? Uh, all the females in my category. <laughs> okay, it's a cat fight. <laughs> that's, that's how these categories should be decided, I reckon. Yeah. Put them Five all contestants <laughs> enter. One contestant leaves. Yes, get them all in those gladiators' atmospheres <laughs> and let them roll around till one person's left breathing. Well, all the best of luck to you, Dan. Yeah, Thank you, you better, very much. Better go and practice your song la, 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 la. and practice your fight. My fight, mate. I've kickbox. I can fight. Hey, right. and Denny, home early to bed, please. Home early to bed, yeah, sure. Now, uh, speaking of uh, Denny, if you, if you don't mind, we're just going to set up something now. Uh, mm. did, were you involved in any uh, football uh, I entertainment? I football. Oh, I did do... Oh, God, my manager, Peter Ricks, I love you. He made me sing at the grand final breakfast at 8 o'clock in the morning. Mm, right. I had to get up at 4 o'clock. But it was all worth it because I bumped into the Dalai Lama. <laughs> Is he a big footy fan, is he? He was running, he was playing. That's where you songs. got that dress. I, I can knew I recognised it somewhere. I'm a right. Well, we're keen to find out about the, we were talking about uh, pre-match entertainment, I know. Uh, In Melbourne side. That's right, the Melbourne pre-match entertainment we last week. We want to talk some rugby. We want to talk some rugby pre-match entertainment. Apparently they had some uh, fantastic historical uh, retrospective going on. Yes, a tribute to 40 years of television. We want uh, listeners to call us up and tell us exactly what what happened uh, at the ARL Grand Final mm -hmm. before the match? Call us on 1-800-151-100. And thanks for talking to us today, Denny Hines. Thank you. Bye.
music. Get her. And there she is, Denny Hines. I like the way pretty much winding up today's Martin Malloy from the foyer of the 96 Aria Awards. It's been exhausting, hasn't it? It has. <laughs> and normal programming will resume tomorrow. Now, just before we go, uh, I know we haven't had much time to talk about anything other than the awards uh, today, mm -hmm. but certainly over the weekend there was footy action galore. Footy, footy, footy. I think we've given the AFL Grand Final enough attention. What about the pre-match entertainment at the ARL mm. Grand Final yesterday, Mickey? We've heard a few whispers. Uh, uh, I didn't actually see. I tuned in a little bit late. Yeah. Clip the start. Didn't see the pre-match. All right, well, let's talk to James. Are you there, James? Yeah, I'm here. You were actually at the game, James? Yeah, I was at the game sitting down the uh, opposite end of the scoreboard. Right, now, we don't want to hear about the footy. That's been talked about enough. Describe that uh, salute to 40 years of television. What was it all about? Uh, it was about a 30-minute advertisement for Channel 9. Was it really? There's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how did it go? What what did it start with? Oh, they had, they had uh, it was like a big television set. They had... The big television set, and I think Hendo came out and said a few words, and then Ray actually Martin. came out of the television. Oh, well, I kind of, we could see the big screen, and Hendo came out of it. He was a bit like in the middle of the thing on a television.